Hey there, Chuck Holton here for Patriot Estate with breaking news out of Israel. Uh, as you've probably heard, Iran has conducted a massive strike on the nation of Israel directly from the state of Iran. And that is a first, at least in a long, long time. Uh, the, Iran the Iranian government has fired several hundred drones and missiles at the I Israeli state. Uh, they don't, they're, they're not super accurate, uh, these drones, and so they are basically just aimed at Israel. And it takes a couple of hours for them to get from Iran. They have to cross all the way across Iraq, cross across Jordan, and then get into Israel. And so as that was happening, in that couple hours of lead time, they had, the Israelis had a lot of advance warning of these strikes. And so they sent up their aircraft from the IDF. The United States joined them with their aircraft from the U.S. Air Force. The U.K. Air Force joined them. The Saudi Air Force and the Royal Jordanian Air Force all put fighter jets up and started shooting those drones and missiles down. And as by the upshot of that was that they actually shot down more than half of them before they got into Israeli territory. And then the Iron Dome in Israel pretty much took care of all the rest. Now, the way the Iron Dome works is it doesn't shoot down every missile, drone, and rocket that gets fired into its territory. It has an AI and an algorithm that calculates where each of those threats is going to land and only if that looks like it's going to threaten a populated area will they fire off an Iron Dome missile to shoot down the incoming threat. If it's going to look pro probably land in a farmer's field or out in the open area somewhere, then they will just simply let it land and that's basically what happened. So they shot down or destroyed about 99% of the hundreds of drones and missiles that were fired in the first two waves. We're still waiting on a third wave now, and, but the, here's the irony of this whole thing. So far, there's only been one casualty that has been reported in Israel because of these attacks from, from Iran, and that casualty is unfortunately a 10-year-old girl, a little Muslim Bedouin girl who lived in a village out in the desert between Jerusalem and the Jordanian border. And there's video of that drone coming in and landing. Those drones, they're called Shad 136 drones, and they're made in Iran <clears throat> with some American parts, by the way, is basically the size of a coffee table or, or a, a picnic table, something like that. Uh, it carries a warhead that's about 70 pounds on it, and that might sound heavy, but that's not really very much explosive. So those things have a long range on them because they have like a lawnmower engine and a big propeller on the back that pushes them. It's basically like a giant paper airplane, and these things fly a very low altitude, 200 uh, to 1,000 feet, something like that, and they're GPS-guided and it's a fire and forget. So these things can't be taken back. They're not being flown like a DJI drone or something that you'd buy at Best Buy. Uh, these things uh, get programmed in with the grid coordinates of their target and they get set loose and then that's it. They don't, they don't come back. It's a one-way uh, kamikaze attack munition. And when these things strike, uh, 70 pounds of explosives is not really enough to like take out a whole town or even a whole city block. Uh, it would destroy a house if it if it hit your house. It would certainly make it unlivable, but it wouldn't you know leave a smoking crater where your house used to be necessarily. Uh, and so these are actually fairly small, fairly uh, impotent weapons. But the point of sending so many hundreds of them is that the Iranians want to saturate the skies with threats and cause Israel to run out of missiles in its Iron Dome system, shooting them out of the sky so that the larger, more powerful cruise missiles can get through. And a cruise missile could ruin your day in, in a small town or a city block or something like that. Now, so far, all the cruise missiles were shot down. Uh, Israel's system is good enough that it can differentiate between the slow, low-moving 
uh, drones and the fast, higher altitude uh, cruise missiles. And those cruise missiles can be shot down by fighter aircraft. So that's what they had their aircraft in the sky doing tonight. And they did a very good job of that and very well protected the Israeli people. Now, the real question is, what else is going to happen? First of all, <clears throat> Iran managed to talk its proxies into attacking at the same time. Uh, so they've been, they, they attacked, there were several dozen rockets fired out of southern Lebanon by Hezbollah. There were some rockets fired out of Syria. Uh, and the Houthis were shooting rockets too, but nobody really pays attention to them because they can't uh, hit the broad side of a barn. And there's kind of like the annoying little brother that just, uh, you know, won't leave you alone. But those threats were dealt with rather quickly. Israel already has a lot of resources in place to deal with those because they've been ongoing threats for quite some time, ever since October 7th. Uh, but now the question is, what is Israel's response going to be? Now, the defense minister came out and gave a speech. Netanyahu came out and gave a speech. In these speeches, what they said is that the United States has given Israel more weapons, more support, more intelligence to strike back at Iran. And uh, the really interesting part of that is that it's likely that the United States may have given one of their new Mako hypersonic missiles to Israel to sort of try out because it hasn't been used in combat yet. These hypersonic missiles fly at 3,500 miles an hour. That's five times the speed of sound. And they would be all but unstoppable by anything that Iran has in terms of air defense. So as they fly in, they, they're going to be able to strike with a missile like that. Now that's going to be more of a statement making missile because they don't have very many of them um, to begin with. And they're not that big, but they're big enough to make a pretty big splash in Iran if they hit the right kind of targets. What has been shown tonight is that Iran can throw everything it has at Israel and not only Israel, but the entire region will come together to fight back against Iran because when it, in the bottom line, the Saudis don't like Iran, the Turks don't like Iran, Jordan doesn't like Iran, nobody really likes Iran. They're just a real nuisance in the, the, the region. And so they have all come together to help Israel, and that's a very, very good sign going forward. Now, Iran also threatened that if anybody helped Israel in this, you know, stop this strike, that they themselves would become a target for Iranian missiles. And so that means that the Iranians may now be setting their sights on the likes of Saudi Arabia and Jordan. But that remains to be seen. Right now, the war cabinet in Israel has voted Bibi Netanyahu has spoken on the phone to President Biden and the War Cabinet decided to let Netanyahu, Yov Gallant, and Benny Gantz make the decision about Israel's response to Iran. And you can be pretty sure that Israel will be making direct strikes on the nation of Iran in very short order. The Israelis have something like 35 uh, F-35 strike fighters and these are some of the most advanced aircraft on planet earth and they can easily penetrate iranian air defenses and strike at will pretty much anywhere inside iran and so unlike the iranians who are just firing at any civilian areas hoping to kill civilians in israel you can bet that the israeli response will be more targeted at Iranian military targets like nuclear, possible nuclear facilities, nuclear enrichment sites, uh, drones, manufacturing plants, things like that. And so we're all kind of waiting to see what Israel's response would be, but you can bet it's gonna be strong and it's gonna come soon. So that's all we've got for today. Make sure you go follow Patriot Estate, subscribe and like this video and share it with your friends. Uh, I'm Chuck Holton. You can find me over on my own uh, Hot Zone podcast here on YouTube. Uh, just look for the Hot Zone with Chuck Holton. And um, we'll see you again soon. Take care.